happened in the world of crypto this week? Well, here to talk with me about it is Andre Nevis from Zebeda. Andre, welcome. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Thanks for um, having me. Great. Glad to have you here. So before we get going, for the benefit of our viewers who may not be familiar with you and the company, uh, do you mind giving us a brief overview? Definitely. Yeah. So uh, myself, um, Andre Nevis, I've been building software for the better part of the last decade uh, on all fronts, mobile, desktop, web. And I've you know, led engineering teams of all kinds uh, to you know, execute on product engineering and strategy visions for many, many companies at this point. Um, for the past two and a half years, I've been building Zebedee uh, and the platform. Uh, Zebedee is a gaming fintech. Uh, we specialize in providing high throughput payment processing solutions uh, for gamers and game developers, right? So if you're trying to build your uh, in-game rewards, in-game economies, in-game points, and you want to actually have value on those points, uh, you would use a, a platform like Zebedee. Um, so uh, maybe I can talk a little bit about the, the founding and how we got to Zebedee uh, at this stage, right? Uh, you know, right now, uh, I'm happy to say that we're a team of over 40 people spread uh, around the world. Uh, we have people in the UK, Brazil, US, Singapore, uh, and really it's, it's a, a remote company first that was, you know, brought up from the very uh, early stages in a remote fashion. Um, at, you know, I think it's one interesting piece that I like to, to talk about is the founding story of, of Zebedee uh, and how uh, things actually came about. Uh, so uh, if you're familiar with the expression, you know, the, the three legs of the tripod and a tripod doesn't stand without a, any, any of the three legs. Uh, so uh, one of the found there's three co-founders to Zebedee. The first one is, is Simon Cowell. He's our CEO and he comes from a financial services background. Uh, he's been, you know, over the past uh, decade has been seeing uh, the events around the world that, that have led to software eating the world. Right. And that's been seeing every day uh, of his of his life, basically, uh, and actually saw uh, how crypto and Bitcoin had begun to eat finance uh, quite a bit over the last couple of years. Uh, he actually has a fond memory uh, of speaking with Ben Horowitz in 2014, uh, where he's talking with him about some this new little startup called Coinbase. And Coinbase right now is, you know, the biggest company in the, in the industry at, at the moment. Um, most recently, Simon led uh, corporate strategy at Bitstamp. Bitstamp is the longest running crypto exchange in Europe. Uh, and then, you know, he just kept on thinking time and time again, now that Bitcoin and crypto have, you know, engulfed themselves and, and are taking over finance, what is the next step? What is the next industry? What is the next vertical? Uh, and gaming kept coming back as, as a constant uh, reminder. Um, so on the other side, Christian Moss is the other uh, co-founder of Zebedee. He's our head of R&D. Uh, he's actually titled uh, as the first Bitcoin game developer uh, in 2013, released the very first Bitcoin game uh, and has been building games with Bitcoin and crypto ever since. Uh, he's seen the ups and downs of the blockchains. He's seen the ups and downs of the many tokens. Um, but really in 2017, with the advancements of Bitcoin through the Lightning Network, uh, that's when you know, we, we sort of realized this is the path forward to putting true value, uh, digital value in games. Um, I myself have been in the industry, uh, you know, from ever since 2015. Um, but really the, the starting point for me deciding to move my entire career towards it uh, was in 2018 uh, when I was picked as one of 10 engineers uh, around the world to participate in the residency program uh, by an R&D company called Chaincode Labs. Uh, they are, you know, a venerable company in the space and they teach sort of the best engineers and developers in the Bitcoin uh, uh, industry. And so I was taught by the cream of the crop and I learned from the best. Uh, and in by mid 2018, uh, the expression is, you know, I was sold. I went down that rabbit hole and, I, you know, lightning network and Bitcoin is, is, is the future. Um, in early 2019, uh, myself, Simon and Chris got together uh, after, you know, meeting through close you know, colleagues of ours, uh, and I believe uh, we all quit our jobs after meeting for five days. I think it was very much less, less than a week. We realized that this was the, the trio that would be able to execute on our vision, uh, and it was a big leap of faith. Uh, you know, we really thought that we had everything that we needed to in order to attack the, you know, the challenges facing the gaming industry when it comes to, to real value and real economies. Um, and then 2.5 years later, here we are. Okay. All right. So a lot of highlights to discuss. Uh, one that caught my attention uh, is yeah. the fact that you uh, announced $11.5 million in a funding round. Uh, care to talk a little bit about that? 
Definitely. Um, so that was announced in September of last year, 2021. Uh, you know, we've been uh, working with uh, high quality investors and strategic investors over the past couple of years. Uh, the last one in our Series A was led by Lakestar. Lakestar is an international VC fund from, you know, primarily based in Europe, and they have plenty of investments in the, the world of gaming as well as in fintech. Um, so, you know, they're able to really help us execute and, and you know, open doors to, to meetings and potential collaborations with companies, uh, you know, as, as a startup does. Um, this the, the goal with the funding, at, uh, you know, as early as September last year is to scale operations, to scale the platform, to scale the team, to scale just about every part of the of, of the Zebedee operations. Um, we're growing. The platform is growing. The team is growing. So uh, the in, you know, the new invested in capital there is to to help us accelerate our growth. Right. Um, another thing that caught my eye is this um, uh, the mobile wallet that you launched. Sure. Yeah. So maybe I can touch slightly more broadly on the product suite and, and how yeah. we're touching on our two customer segments. Um, so, Robert, we have, uh, you know, we're we're covering the entire gaming industry. And uh, as, a, as a gaming fintech, we don't only serve game developers. We also serve gamers. Right. We have to onboard roughly 2.7 billion gamers into this world of true digital money inside of games and we also need to provide the technology for the game developers to be able to provide those capabilities inside of their games um, so uh, on the gamer side what we provide is sort of this mobile wallet that is your key your entrance into this world uh, and with the zebedee wallet anyone with an iphone or android can easily download that um, you immediately get started it's as simple as you know creating an account sign up log in with google nothing too complicated um, one of the goals of Zebedee is to abstract complexities, right? We can't expect to onboard billions of users if we're having to teach them too much about the underlying technology, right? It has to be familiar. It has to be simple. Um, later down the path, they can learn more and we can help educate them on, on the merits of, of the, the Bitcoin technology. Uh, but at first, the goal is to onboard them in. So the Zebedee wallet is that entry point. You're able to send to your friends, receive a transaction from your friends. You're able to pair that wallet with a handful of games that are now baked into the platform. So you're able to pair your wallet and sort of receive rewards from games directly to your wallet while you're playing games. Um, and we also, we also think of, of the Zebedee product suite for gamers as a, as a you know, the, the tagline is Zebedee is everywhere you are. Um, so if, if, you know, down in real life, if you egg, leave your house, you put your wallet on your, on your back pocket and you enter a store, you simply pick up your wallet and you get to use it. Um, on an online environment, if I close my laptop, uh, I now need an, I need to have the ability to go back to my wallet on my phone, right? Or vice versa. If I arrive in my office and I close down my phone, I now need to be able to use my wallet on a desktop environment. So uh, the tagline around Zebedee's Everywhere You Go is we provide uh, what's known as extensions. So your Zebedee wallet is on your phone and it's sort of your key, but we have a, an extension for your Google Chrome or your Mozilla Firefox. We have an extension for Discord. So if you're chatting with your friends and you're talking before entering a guild, right, or entering a, a, a map on a game, you can send and receive transactions and payments as easy as, you know, sending a message. Um, we also have an integration with Steam, which is, you know, a big gaming platform provider, uh, which allows, you know, the ability to use Bitcoin inside of games that are enabled in that platform. Um, so Zebedee is really wherever you are when it comes to a gamer's perspective. You sign up with the wallet and you get this breadth of, of user experiences available just, just about everywhere. Mm. So on the on your website, it mentions that the, the wallet is now integrated with uh, Bitstamp. Obviously, that's big news. Tell us more about that. Definitely. That's one of the very exciting ones. I think, you know, the holy grail for just about everyone uh, entering and, and, and interacting with the world of Bitcoin is to be able to use your credit card, buy $10 worth of Bitcoin, interact with the Bitcoin network. And, you know, if I have some Bitcoin and I would like to cash out, I would like to click a few buttons and cash that out. Uh, Bitstamp being our exchange portal provider, uh, they're the first one we've integrated with. Uh, effectively, it means any Bitstamp user uh, that is able to use the Bitstamp infrastructure and integrations uh, are able to immediately log in into the Zebedee platform, into the Zebedee wallet, and you can immediately move Bitcoin to and from Bitstamp and Zebedee on a click of a button. Um, so what that means is you can play games online, uh, use the Zebedee wallet to interact with those games, and whenever you're ready, you can cash that out through uh, the many 
exchange providers that we have, Bitstamp being the first big one. Um, you know, we're working on, on new providers, but Bitstamp has been a great partner to us, uh, you know, and, and they've really helped us push and, and improve on the, uh, uh, the sort of industry around Bitcoin gaming and what it means to introduce Bitcoin into, into games. Mm. Uh, also on your website, you've made uh, mention of uh, the launch of ZBD.gg. What, what's that? Yeah, I think uh, so. ZBD.gg is yet another piece uh, of the experience of a you of a gamer in this universe. Um, so you can imagine a scenario where you have your, uh, you know, more or less your wallet, which is this identity you carry around, right? And you pair your wallet with the many games. The ZBD.gg interface is your gamer tag. So every Zebedee gamer has a gamer tag. My gamer tag, for example, is Andre. Your, yours could be Robert, similarly to how you have a Twitter handle. Um, and what that means is you have a page, a website page, which you can send users to, you can send friends to, you can embed into your website, you can save it as an image. And what it is, it's an all-encompassing page for your gamer tag, your QR codes to receive payments, your addresses to receive transactions, right? The ability to showcase what you've earned and won in the many games that you've played. So it's sort of your portal. Like this is my Zebedee gamer tag. You can visit me at zbd.gg slash Andre, right? So it's sort of that online interface that you can have for, for just about every gamer. Mm. So um, talk a little bit about the, the revenue model for the company and where the revenue is coming from. Definitely. So uh, I think it's important to touch on on what it means to use Bitcoin first. I think, you know, um, we use what's known as the Lightning Network. It is a, a layer two payments network. It sits on top of Bitcoin and it allows one participant of the, such a network to send, receive, transfer Bitcoin uh, essentially instantaneously and again, essentially free. Um, Fees are raised to the bottom when it comes to network fees. Um, and right now, through the Lightning Network, you could send Bitcoin to anywhere in the world, uh, and it settles immediately and for a value as low as one Satoshi. So uh, there is a hundred cents in a dollar. There's a hundred million Satoshis in one Bitcoin, right? So we're talking about zero, you know, one one hundredth of a cent, right? That's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is because Bitcoin is not just, you know, different money, better money, and digital money. It is just better technology. When it comes to Bitcoin, there's a lot of discussion around price speculation, market dynamics. Um, but let's just flip the coin a little, a little bit. The traditional payment processing systems right now incur tons of costs and tons of fees. We're talking about processing the, the transaction fees. We're talking about credit card processing fees. We're talking about international settlement fees. We're we're talking about the platform fees, right? So these can easily reach five, six, seven, ten percent, right? It really depends on the on the platform of the provider. And so inadvertently, you prohibit micropayments uh, from being used, right? You can actually make a payment in cash for fifty cents, but you can't do that digitally, right? You you simply can't do that. The cheapest thing you can now buy online nowadays. Uh, is an app store on the app, like it's an app on the app store, and it's roughly 60 cents. Anything below that is actually infeasible to do on a credit card environment because the costs are so high. Once it hit, hits your account, it's actually a dollar twenty. Um, so you're not actually paying. So uh, as a technology, Bitcoin allows for much more, right? Uh, I think it's also important to touch on any and all in-app purchases that happen inside of the Apple App Store incur a 30% fee. Right. So you're no you're you're also you're talking about these walled gardens, which they aren't walled gardens of money, right? Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, they all speak US dollars. There's just lots of middlemen that involve that take a, a cut of everything. With Bitcoin and Lightning, these fees essentially come down to zero. So the business model for Zebedee is one to provide these new capabilities, which are inherently impossible in the current tradi traditional finance infrastructure. Um, but you know, we we are a platform and we take a cut. Right now, we're taking a one percent flat fee, uh, and there's a lot of strategy and and research being done on this front. Uh, as a technology, it is relatively nascent, so we're watching the space carefully and and you know, uh, you know, sort of adapting to it. Um, but but what we provide is we take a small cut, which compared to current incumbents, it's relatively tiny. Uh, and we allow game developers to attain that extra fee themselves. So if they're providing for a transaction inside of their games, Zebedee is taking the 1% and the game developer can take X percent. And that is up to them, right? And so it's a sort of a free market dynamics. If it's too large, gamers won't make those transactions. If it's too little, gamers will come back because it's relatively affordable. Um, so it's very much a, a 
transaction fee business model, but it is evolving as we continue to grow as a company and as the industry continues to grow. To right. grow. So, so from a business perspective, uh, the key is to capture the developers and have them use your platform versus, say, someone else's. Absolutely. And I think it, it, it's important to highlight that it is our platform in the sense that it's the Zebedee ecosystem and platform. But we consume and use and uh, you sort of rely upon open networks open standards, right? No one owns the Bitcoin network. No one is saying that the Bitcoin inside of Zebedee is different than the Bitcoin inside of Coinbase, right? These are, it's the same money, even though uh, you have things like uh, Cash App in the United States and you have Venmo, which both speak dollars. They simply cannot interoperate and send funds to one another. Um, with, with Bitcoin, it's you're onboarding into the Zebedee ecosystem, but you're also onboarding into a massive global network that is available everywhere to just about everyone right so it is very much getting the developer you know uh, uh, work involved but it is also the benefit that come with you know consuming an open network and what that means uh, from a game perspective right 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 so um, you mentioned that the developers getting um, a piece of the action um, what about the gamers are they paying to use the service? No, so uh, from the gamer's perspective, everything is is free. Uh, you can sign up. There's no cost to use it. The only cost is if I am making a transaction uh, and it is outside of the Zebedee ecosystem, I may incur that 1% fee as I'm paying for it, right? So if I'm sending it to another exchange and if I'm sending it to you know, my own wallet somewhere else, you may incur that fee. Um, but something that's interesting that's happening is, uh, you know, whereas in the 2010s you saw uh, Stripe, uh, you know, boost the e-commerce boom so that every mom and pop shop didn't, doesn't have to have, uh, you know, a payment processing gateway. They could be, you know, just run a shop online. Um, and, and then you, you follow that with in-app purchases enabled by Apple and the Google Play stores. Uh, you know, free to play games sort of blew up, right? It's, it's 80 to 90% of the market and you have in, in-app transactions making that, that capability in there. Um, what we're seeing with, you know, what's happening with the, you know, ad addition of Bitcoin into these worlds, into these gaming worlds is that, uh, lots of players from emerging markets are seeing this as a big opportunity to earn, you know, sizable rewards, right? So we have, uh, I believe over 25% of uh, ac daily activity at Zebedee is coming from emerging markets, specifically South America. Brazil is one of the biggest markets right now. Uh, and Brazil as a country is one of the most highly connected, you know, country in the world when it comes to internet users. Um, so uh, the gaming, the, the gamer demographic is already more tech savvy. They are more used to digital payments, digital value. Uh, and we now have, you know, uh, folks that are 14, 15, 16, 17 playing these games consistently every day and then coming back to us and telling us that you know for the first time in a couple months they've been able to pay rent on time uh, they've been able to to buy groceries for xyz purpose they've been able to pay for this other method and of course there's a, an aspect there around currency conversion right emerging markets ha have slightly weaker currencies um, but the fact that we as an a u.s entity you know distributed around the world are able to create this much impact on emerging markets is very, very powerful. Um, so gamers are actually not paying to use it. They're actually earning a ton of, of rewards and, and Bitcoin when, when playing games backed by Zebedee. Right. So um, you're, you mentioned that it's based on Bitcoin. Did you look at other um, coins, um, Cardano, Solano, et cetera, to, as opposed to? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's definitely a lot that's happening in crypto market in general. Um, you know, we, we as a company like to make our bets on things that we feel certain will be here for the long haul, right? I think uh, there's a lot of fragmentation uh, around the blockchains when it comes to technologies, right? So we're talking about smart contracts, the ability to do X, Y, or Z. So you have many blockchains doing similar things. I guess the, the hype around right now is the NFT. So you have NFTs on Ethereum, you have NFTs on Solana, you have NFTs on Tezos. Um, you know, as a business, it's tough to uh, look at this fragmentation and decide where to pursue resources and where to build solutions, right? Again, we're solving problems for the gaming industry. And whereas, uh, you know, some of these problems are crypto industry problems, not necessarily gaming industry. So we have been analyzing, we have been researching, but we would love to see some consolidation on where the market is headed before we go, you know, deep dive into it. 
as we see right now, Bitcoin is is the money and we're solving payments. So we're solving the Bitcoin problem. Uh, but as a company, we will continue to strive to provide solutions for the game developers. And as you can, I'm sure you can tell, there's lots of developer interest around digital assets collectibles, right? Um, so there's definitely more movement on that direction. Uh, but as it currently stands, we're focusing on, on providing Bitcoin based solutions. Right. So we've covered a lot of ground about the company. Anything we, that we missed or anything that bears repeating before uh, we move on? No, I think I think one piece that we're very excited for is, you know, the the upbringing and the, the discussions around metaverse, right? Everyone's talking about metaverse. We like to, to use the term virtual worlds, which is a little bit more broad. Uh, Robert, right now we're in a virtual world. We can, you know, stream 8K video to each other. We can chat. We can send messages. We cannot transact value, right? It's infeasible for us to send money to each other. It just can't happen. And if you add the global distinctions between different countries, now we're talking about different currencies, and that's already a nightmare in and of itself. So the discussions around metaverse is very exciting because it's finally begging the questions that we have been answering uh, for a while, which is metaverse that everyone talks about actually means interoperability. Um, if you have metaverse A backed by Facebook, which has, you know, MetaCoin as one of the monies there, and then you have Microsoft's virtual world B, which uses Microsoft coin, right? And then you have the metaverse Z for Fortnite. These are not the true depiction of what we believe a metaverse in the future looks like. These are just slightly more advanced virtual worlds. And if you have the same currency issues moving from one virtual world to the other as you do move going from one country to the other, that world is not better than what we currently have, right? So we're actually very excited to be able to pursue and, and discuss how Bitcoin is how we really achieve interoperability between all these virtual worlds, right? You can you can already transfer value, you can transfer data, you can now just move from one virtual world to the other and everything stays the same. Um, so as a company, we're very excited that this is all coming up in, you know, what I would like to say mainstream news, because now we get to talk that, you know, and answer these hard questions, right? So speaking of uh, mainstream news, uh, did anything happen in the world this past week that caught your attention that uh, our viewers need to know about? So in, in general, I think the, the exciting pieces, Robert, is, uh, again, how much mainstream adoption and discussion has been happening around Bitcoin. Uh, in September of last year, we saw the first nation, El Salvador, really pick up the conversation around, you know, making Bitcoin legal tender. They, they have actually gone forward with it. People in the country have been onboarded, millions of people in the country have been onboarded into Bitcoin and in subsequent through Lightning Network as well, and they're making payments on a daily basis. Uh, I think Bitcoin as a network has really great incentive structures um, for just about every participant, whether if you're a miner, uh, a service provider, a user, a country. Uh, and so it's very exciting that you have news of you know Erdogan and, and, and Turkey discussing the idea around Bitcoin and crypto and what it means to regulate those. Uh, and most recently, I guess it was this week or, or late last week, was around uh, Vladimir Putin uh, in Russia discussing you know and and initially the conversation is always about we need to ban it and then two days later they come back actually we have a lot of advantages and there's a lot of benefits right so the incentive structures are, are playing out and I think you know 2022 will be very interesting to see uh, quite a few more nation states. Uh, adopting, regulating, understanding Bitcoin and other crypto assets to a larger extent. So I'm very excited to be able to, to pursue that on, on the Zebedee front as well. Yeah, you know, uh, Putin, when he made the announcement that they have a competitive advantage, he, he made mention of the fact that they have a surplus of electricity in their country. Are, do you see other countries that can boast this surplus where, where mining uh, can take place uh, that we may not know about yet? Yeah, so there's a lot of discussion around renewable energy, right? So the situation around, uh, you know, geothermal, um, you know, uh, uh, like waste gas uh, is also a piece. So you have companies that are building solutions for massive gas and oil uh, companies that are like, hey, this little bit of waste uh, can be used to mine Bitcoin and turn that, you know, waste into full blown money and through electricity. Um, so there's definitely countries in the north, like Norway has been pretty big when it comes to, uh, you know, mining in these in these container styles up north. Um, but there's, you know, in general, there's just a lot of discussions around, uh, uh, you know, pursuing more renewable energy solutions with Bitcoin. Uh, I think 2022, we're just, you know, it's again, scratching the surface on what it's going to happen uh, uh, for the next year or so. Yeah. So I, 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 we would be remiss if we didn't make mention of the recent crash in crypto bitcoins now as we're talking is trading at uh, 36,488 uh, any comment about what's happened over the past couple of weeks with 
crypto? Sure, I think uh, maybe not the answer you would be searching for, but uh, I think what's interesting is, uh, you know, from from our side as service providers, we're not an exchange, right? So we're not, uh, if the market is on a downturn, exchanges tend to see fewer transactions, fewer purchases, more sales, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you see, you know, charts actually going down on usage, daily active users, etc. cetera. Um, as we're pursuing, we're using Bitcoin as a technology rail. We're not dependent on it being 45,000 or 35,000, right? So our numbers actually have not been affected and continue to grow and, uh, you know, charts are up and to the right. Numbers are continue to growing, hundreds of thousands of, of users and, and gamers at this stage. Um, so it's actually uh, uh, an interesting thing where the entire market may seem to be in a downturn, uh, but from a service provider standpoint, uh, things are actually looking great. Uh, there's no discussion about price. Game developers are excited, uh, you know, and we continue to build new features and new opportunities for uh, even in the case where there's a market downturn, hopefully developers don't have to be, you know, uh, uh, impacted by it, right? We can use technology to automatically settle that to their bank accounts immediately, right? There's a lot of, of, of technical uh, capabilities there. Um, so, you know, up or down, we're very excited to be to be building upon Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, again, we've covered a lot of ground. Anything uh, that uh, you want to make reference to before we wrap up? Uh, I just wanted to, to mention something that's been uh, happening in the Bitcoin and Lightning uh, space, which I think is a pretty cool development. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, Zebedee is always trying to improve user experience and provide familiar interactions. Uh, you know, someone that does not understand Bitcoin or crypto or anything can just join and enter this world. Uh, there's been a new, you know, slightly more technical capability that's been rolled out called the Lightning Address. So whenever you send and receive Bitcoin, you, you see these strings of characters, right? And it always feels complicated and you always have a QR code and it always feels slightly, you know, maybe I'm going to mess up, right? You, maybe I'm going to do something wrong here. Um, what this lightning address protocol provides is uh, if you're familiar with emails, you have Robert at Finstream.tv, right? Or something like that. Anyone knows how to send an email. Um, the lightning address protocol brings that capability. So you could have Robert at you know, payments.com, right? And that would be your payment address. And anyone around the world that would like to send you Bitcoin could send directly to Robert at pay.com. Uh, and it's a very familiar experience. It's a great onboarding tool. And it really solves that discovery piece. How do I pay Robert, right? Right now, I would have to help find you on PayPal, find you on Venmo, find you on LinkedIn. Um, and I have to use those proprietary services right now with something like Bitcoin, which many, many wallets support, many companies support, I would be able to send from any wallet to you, which could be using any other wallet anywhere in the world through this interface, which feels like an email, right? So this is, has been very positive change and you know it's been very well received by customers, gamers, and users of the platform as well. Um, so we're very excited for, for you know, continued to support open networks, open standards, um, because these always win at the, at the end. Well, that's exciting news because we at Finstream have been thinking about how can we accept uh, payments and maybe this is the answer. Exactly. To, um, <laughs> there you go. I'd love to help on that. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, uh, Andre, well, this has been great. Really enjoyed meeting you, talking about uh, Zebeda and, um, and hopefully you'll come back on as uh, the company uh, launches new things and has more new things to talk about. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully 2022 will come back many times with many new updates.